Hello, welcome to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. Thank you so much for joining us today. Once again, we're taking this walk through the diaconate, and it's one of my things to do since that's where I come from. But we were very blessed in the Diocese of uh, Baton Rouge to have very recently ordained six new permanent deacons, and their walk is a little bit different than the walk of all the other deacons that have gone before them because we have a very new deacon program and it's been a lot of different stuff. And then they had COVID. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that again today. And I'm, I'm blessed today with one of our new deacons, Alec Campbell. Welcome, Alec. Thank you so much, Deacon. It's so great for you to be here, Deacon Alec. I'm so glad that you're here. You getting used to that, Deacon Alec? Yeah. No, no, it's never. I don't. I don't think I'm ever going to quite get used to it. But you know, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely a, a kind of a little jolt whenever someone you know you, you think you're okay, and then all of a sudden someone catches you off guard, and you're. You're right back on it. So. so my first assignment was Christ the King at LSU, and mm -hmm. and I just I'm a new newbie, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, what do we call you?" I said, "Call me Jody." And then they said, "Jody," <laughs> that you know, yeah. And, and, and you, you just need to get used to it. It yeah. just happens, you know. And, you know in time. <laughs> and then and then the the funniest part is when you're. Well, we haven't been able to greet at the end of Mass yet, but when we start, you see the people come out, and a lot of them will call you Father. Oh. It's like. <laughs> Well, no, he's father. Yeah, and then you just got to get used to. You can't do that. You yeah. know, let people go where they are. You yeah. know. So tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Well, and how you get here and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm originally from Alexandria. Um, oh, okay. I, I grew up uh, there um, with my grandparents and my mom, um, and uh, I spent the first 18 years of my life there. Um, and uh, so um, I went to Menard uh, High School. Brothers uh, of the Sacred Heart. Oh, uh, yeah, they're uh, good times. And then uh, I, I, from there, um, I took some opportunities to travel um, internationally as a missionary and um, eventually, you know, got into youth ministry and, um, and eventually made my way here with my wife and our three kids. And uh, that's uh, kind of how uh, you know, the, our progression, it, it went away for a little while, but it, it eventually came back home to Louisiana. So. Well, that's cool. So as a youth minister, where where did you live and what did okay, you do? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, whenever I uh, got done with my two years of mission work, um, I uh, went, uh, had an opportunity in the Diocese of Alexandria to go to Northwestern State University, to Holy Cross Catholic Church, uh, to do um, a unique project with the diocese. Um, the Louisiana School for Math, Arts, and Science is right, right. there in Natchitoches, Natchitoches, right. and um, they they're juniors and seniors coming, or at least they were when they're. Now they I know they have sophomores now that are at the program uh, in the program, and um, the diocese recognized a problem in the state of Louisiana. We confirm as juniors, so a lot of our Catholic students were going to Northwestern uh, to Louisiana School for Math, Arts, and Science um, as juniors, and so they were missing that last year of confirmation. Wow, yeah, that's so, true. So um, the uh, Holy Cross Catholic Church uh, took an opportunity to um, start a youth ministry program and also a confirmation Prep. contingency uh, to yeah. help either give them an opportunity to be confirmed there in Natchitoches or to go home to their home parishes and be confirmed with their classes uh, at home. So um, I moved there um, and uh, I was able to do that for two and a half years. Um, I met my wife um, during that time. And, uh, you know, when you get to that time and you're, you're facing marriage and you're like, I want to marry this person and, you know, and, and you're getting some things in order and then, you know, you're your uh, your soon-to-be bride goes well. What are you going to do for money? You know, how, how are you going to support us? And uh, so I took an opportunity to use uh, youth ministry uh, and and put a lot of applications out there and see what kind of fish bite on the hook. And um, I, I came back with three opportunities: one in New Jersey, one in Kansas, and uh, one in Oklahoma. And I said. I, I posed her, so where do you want to live, you know? And she was like, uh, which one's closest to Louisiana? We were both Louisianians at heart. And I said, Oklahoma, Shawnee, Oklahoma is the closest of the three. And she's like, okay, I guess that's where we're going. And um, I, may, I had an opportunity to um, uh, meet up at St. Benedict Catholic Church in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and become the youth minister and, and uh uh, and a confirmation coordinator there. Um, from there, I moved into Oklahoma City. I'm still a part of the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. Was a youth minister there at St. James for another four years, and then uh, then uh, 
our first child was was coming and uh, both being uh, native Louisianans it's time to come home grandparents are going to get itchy you know mm -hmm. so we uh, you know we, we took an opportunity then to, to move on back home to the diocese my wife is originally from central uh, Grimmel Springs area so we uh, made that jump then uh, to mm -hmm. come back here to the diocese and um, move into the next phase of life for us mm -hmm. so. well, that's interesting that's a yeah. good background deep in <laughs> deep in religious faith yeah, yeah. and in service and ministry and yeah, it was it was always important to my grandmother very early on um, to really instill the faith my mom carried that through through the sacraments and and really made a priority of faith for us and it was something that I was able to do into high school and then eventually into my adult mm -hmm. life. And, and I think it, it was those foundations that brought me to where I am today. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So um, when you moved back here, did you stay in ministry? Or you to... um, the, the plan was to stay in the ministry, um, but opportunities were, were not, not as good at that point in time. And, and so I took an opportunity to look into a new ministry. And um, I... I looked at different possibilities and one was at um, Our Lady of the Lake uh, Regional Medical Center is where I still currently work with Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady uh, Great. Health System Great and um, you know I, I looked at that that opportunity to move into a field I may, may not have known a lot about but there is a very very deep rich, uh, rich ministry and hospital ministry mm -hmm. and um, I, I, that's kind of where I've, I've moved up from there so that's good. Yeah. That, that's all. That ministering is is yeah. uh, universal because you yeah. know you can minister in a lot of areas. Yeah. That's very very good. So tell us then uh, about your call to the diaconate and how that all happened. Yeah. Well, I think I can go back to when I was in high school. Um, one of the things that I was very blessed with being in part of ministry, even at that age. Um, there was always a possibility of wanting to go to seminary and maybe become a priest. And um, I looked into it in the Diocese of Alexandria. And as I was moving through the different ministries and the different opportunities that I had on the table um, with missionary work and whatnot, at some point in time that, that real discernment needed to start. And um, I met with the bishop at the time. And, and uh, at that point in time, it was um, when I got back, it was late in the year. so turning around and discerning to go to seminary that year wasn't quite on the table at that point. It would have been too quick of a turnaround. So um, he said, well, in a year's time, if you still want to go to seminary, um, you know, let's, let's do that. And, um, and, and that was when I moved to Natchitoches. And um, in that year, like I said, I met my wife. So that, you know, that, that opportunity kind of went away, but it left a desire in my life to, to, still want to serve and it was always a foundational thing and so when that opportunity went away um, I thought well I got to find other ways to serve the church and, and, and the different ministries but that, that desire never went away for holy orders and, and, and so I think when I came back to the Diocese of Baton Rouge um, I was let know that they're restarting the diaconate program and it might be something that I want to discern with all of the ministry that I had in my background and might be a way to continue to do a more um, a more official service right. for the church mm -hmm. and so that that's whenever I got um, that's when I met up with Father Jamin David who is uh, was the director of or is the formation director for the Diocese of Baton Rouge and um, he you know we went we started the steps at that point mm -hmm. yeah well, that's cool. So when you met with Father Jamin, um, the program was changing yeah. uh, from the RSI program with, through St. Ben's and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was moving toward Fran Yu when you were familiar with Fran Yu because you worked for the, the yeah. Franciscan uh, sisters. Mm -hmm. And so you knew that this was going on probably before you even met with Father T. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and, and I, I think it, it, it was a blessing because it was something that I was kind of on, it was on my radar, not so much for the diaconate, but the actual formation and theology, uh, maybe to have an opportunity to get a theology degree. You know, so let's talk about that. So you you didn't have a degree already. I, yes, so sir. this is perfect for you, mm -hmm. and this is the reason uh, um, why I think the move was was good. Now there are some little hiccups in this move. Mm -hmm. uh, we could talk about it at some other time, but um, I'll give you an example. So I I had all the all this education, and mm -hmm. I wanted to get a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And when I approached the bishop, he said, No, no, no. We have a lot of men who don't have degrees. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to make the diaconate available to them because they are ripe for ministry, mm -hmm. which is you. Yeah. You're ripe for ministry your whole life, mm -hmm. you know. So this is an opportunity for you to begin to get your theology degree. Mm -hmm. And so this is an awesome opportunity for people who don't have a college degree, that want to be deacons, mm -hmm. that also may want to get an undergraduate theology degree. Yeah. And it's a perfect program. So tell us a little bit about what what the program was for you. Yeah, and, and, and so like you were saying, the opportunity there, the, the Franciscan, uh, uh, Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University um, uh, developed a theology department and they're offering um, bachelor's degrees, but when that opportunity came, they made a, a, a joint agreement with the diocese um, to do the formation for the uh, deacons. And initially that's kind of daunting because all of a sudden you're taking university classes at, at a very high level. And, right. um, and initially I know I was, I was kind of like, whoa, but I, I think um, at that point, the way they structured it for the deacons, you take two classes a week you know, um, in two classes a semester. So that idea of not being fully loaded like a full theology degree where you're not taking, you know, 12, 16 hours a right. semester, um, it makes it very obtainable. And, and the, the professors at FranU are, I, I, in my opinion, just absolutely second to none. They're, they're more about making sure that you succeed and that you get the information that it is tangible to you and that you can use it and um, you know and that and that is something that I I think sometimes we can lose even on the the public um, collegiate level that you know it's just taking a class to get a class done to eventually get your degree well that wasn't my experience at FranU those professors took us you know, and, and really made it obtainable um, to be able to take college level theology, made it real for us so that when we have the opportunity as deacons to teach and to, to fill that, that role as, our deacon, as a deacon, um, you know, that was something that we were able to stick into our back pocket. And um, like you said, it is a five year process. So that's two classes a semester, four classes a year, 60 hours of theological training um, over the five years. And um, it, it's not only a primer, but it, it's a good place to, to, to really hone in your skills for theological training. And that's a good place to take a break. How's that? That's great. We're gonna take a short break. We're talking to new deacon, Alec Campbell, who, uh, is actually a uh, sign of St. Patrick, and we're gonna be back after a short break and continue with Deacon Alex. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Father Joshua Johnson. I am the vocation director for the Diocese of Baton Rouge. God our Father created each and every single one of us, you and I, for no other reason than because God desires for us to become saints. That is our primary vocation, to become a saint forever in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity with God. But for some of us, our path to becoming a saint is going to be through the state of life vocation of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. If, if you believe that God might be calling you, if you have a thought, hey look, God might be inviting me to discern the priesthood of Jesus Christ as my path to becoming a saint, to help other people become saints in their walk toward eternity, then I want to invite you to reach out to me at our office vocations here at the Diocese of Baton Rouge so that we can walk with each other. I can accompany you in your discernment and your prayer and learning more about the gift of the priesthood of Jesus Christ so that you can discern, is God inviting you to walk toward eternity as a priest of Jesus Christ? Time and time again, you know, when I'm doing street magic, I'll walk up to someone and, and I can just see that they're against me, right? They don't want to be amazed. They don't want this experience to happen. But then the magic happens and, and all that falls away. It's the experience of, of waking up and seeing things the way you saw them before they became ordinary. I'm looking for that experience of wonder.
Welcome back to Catholic Life. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. I'm so glad you stayed with us through the break. I'm talking to Deacon Alec Campbell, who is now assigned to St. Patrick, and we're going to get there. Yeah. But let's finish that thought we had. I just want to, because um, there are a lot of people that are watching that either know somebody that may feel the call mm -hmm. or, or maybe feeling the call themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I, wanna, I wanna explore the awesome opportunity to continue beyond the 60 hours. So you're mm -hmm. halfway to an yeah. undergraduate degree. Yes, sir. Now, I would assume that the opportunity is there to go get those prerequisites and just finish it. Right, yeah, and there are. And Fran, Fran U is a four-year university. They have um, everything that you would need to get your undergraduate um, in, uh, in theology. Um, they also have a minor and uh, with plans to do a master's at some point as well. Um, the program is, uh, is e extensive, um, but yeah, everything is in place there at the university if we do want to continue on. Um, and it's, but it's not contingent on that as well. Right. You know, your 60 hours are your 60 hours and yeah. you can take those however you want um, to um, further your education even beyond uh, Fran U. Yeah, that's awesome, that is great. So in the fifth year mm -hmm. of this, you wind up as an intern. Yeah. And you, be a, and you become assigned to a parish, mm -hmm. and that's when it kind of gets real. Yeah, um, <laughs> I was assigned to uh, St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church um, here in the diocese uh, for my internship. Um, I was there with Father Rick, He's a, a phenomenal, he's a, an ordered priest, so that was something that uh, goes back to my past whenever um, I was uh, in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and I was working with the Benedictines there um, and the church, St. Benedict's, and um, so it was a thrill to be able to um, work um, in a mission uh, parish and um, with Father Rick on uh, his um, different different ministry opportunities that is very different than a lot of the parishes in our in our in our diocese so it, it really spoke to my to my heart it was it was really good to be able to be there um, with the people of St. Paul's get to know the people of St. Paul's uh, enter into ministry um, RCIA um, and then um, so a lot of that was happening and then you know uh, as we all know this past year kind of took a turn once we got to March and so the last part of my, my internship really began uh, to be, uh, it started to transition like we've all had to transition with COVID um, and um, learn how to minister from afar and um, really finish those last couple of months and make sure that the things that, um, you know, were, we were able to do um, through the, the, through technology and whatnot, um, especially going into Holy Week and Easter, um, having that being broadcast in afar, you know, really taking on some of those challenges, but still ministering, you know, and, and that's something that I'm even still taking now that I'm a deacon um, into my ministry now mm -hmm. at St. Patrick's. So um, I can relate because <laughs> uh, for many years I uh, did confirmation mm -hmm. at, at St. Paul's with Father Rick and the other three churches. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's an awesome place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, I, I can just only imagine yeah. the uplifting environment yeah. that you're in when you're there with the music. So and Sundays are, are just, uh, I mean, uh, it might be a little bit longer than what you're kind of used to as masses go, but uh, you, you feel filled. Oh, you feel, you absolutely. know, filled up when you, when you leave mass. And it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a culture that, that is just so deep with that community mm -hmm. um, that uh, doesn't matter who you are. You walk in, your family, they're uh, there to welcome you in, and, and, and you really, uh, it really touches all the senses. You know, right. it's, you, know you feel like you've, you've been somewhere, you feel like you've been filled, and you're ready to meet the week right. as you go out. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was a true blessing to be at St. Paul's. Yeah. Um, so when you get a little closer to ordination and they postpone it, it's like, oh, you got a kid in five years. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of it, par for the course for me. I, I've always been a person who just really kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I say that, you know, God, I've opened myself up to you. You've led me down this path and all of a sudden it's like, no, no, not yet. You know, it's like, um, and so, yeah, and I think that's for all of us, all six of us who were ordained this year. You know, when we got to uh, April and, and May, um, 
they, uh, you know, and we started looking at the real possibility that June wasn't going to be viable to have ordinations. Um, they, they started really kind of saying, okay, guys, you know, let's, let's kind of hold serve here for a little bit. Let's, uh, let's um, you know, uh, they, they were encouraged us to continue on in whatever ministry that we can do. They encouraged us to find some time to, to deepen ourselves for prayer, you know, really prepare our time before we get ordained. I, I um, you know, my wife and I joked a lot about, well, you know, that it was all kind of a joke. It was like, you know, they put you through five years of all of this and they get you to the <laughs> precipices. And then all of a sudden, no, guys, don't worry. You were, the, you, were the, you, you were the guinea pigs. You know, you, we, we tried it out on you. We'll just ordain the next class, you know. So, um, you know, it was um, so. Yeah. But I but I. I it was really a blessing because it really did take that time, and and if I, you know, I really did take that time to, you know, hold serve like like I had said, and 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 really dive deep into what is this about to, right. that is about to happen to me, and um, I think during that time it really did uh, set the stage for mm -hmm. for eventually. Um, you know, taking that, that day on um, open-eyed and ready to serve. So. so tell us about that day. Um, you know, I, I, as time goes, my memory of my ordination, mm -hmm. it's, it's segmented. There are parts of it that, I, that are fried into my brain. There are other parts of it that just kind of fade because, you know, right. you've been, I've been to so many ordinations now, you know, <laughs> at, since then. Yeah. So tell us about your day. Oh, uh, well, um, my day really started a week before um, I, uh, because we are in a time of COVID, um, my, um, my mom and my grandparents were diagnosed with COVID the Friday before my ordination. So we found out now, I, I say this, they're absolutely fine. They they were very blessed in not experiencing the symptoms. I'm sorry. My <laughs> jaw just dropped. <laughs> so so um, it, it was it was really taking that in a little bit and, and going, well, you know, do I do I wanna wait? Do I do I wanna you know, I want my mom, I want my grandparents, these people who have been solid rocks of faith for me, who have always prayed for me, who have always been the support for me to do all these times of ministry and um, you know, we, we we talked about it very and, and and COVID does play a very large role to our day because you know, we had restrictions. It was only open to um, a few of our family. It was only open to um, guests that we were allowed to, who, who had a part in the, in the actual day. So it was a very almost subdued kind of day. So it was talking with my wife and talking with our kids and going, you know, you know, what, what, what is, you know, so like, what is God telling us in this moment? And, and, um, you know, I talked with my grandparents, I talked with my mom and they were like, no, no, it's, this is this, you know, as much as we want to be there, um, through the power of technology, we're still going to be able to be there via, via television, via, uh, you know, the internet. So are you they know, still in Alexandria? Yeah, they're still in Alexandria. They still, they're, they're uh, still. Um, so they didn't get to come to Baton Rouge. Uh, no, they, they, um, they're wow. still there. And um, but you know, again, it, it was a blessing to know that they were still a part. You know, they were still there because of the the, the, the changes we've had to do. You know, with with vi uh, with uh, videotaping masses, with um, all of these types of uh, technologies that we've had to be able to open this up, but. In a in a great way, that's become a very a very good ministry for our you know homebound, our shut-ins, those types of things. And I was still able to have some of my family here that um, that we did. And I actually, um, my uh, my two sons, I had a, a picture printed of both my mom and my grandparents, and they were uh, actually were holding pictures. You know, like you see at stadiums where they have the cardboard <laughs> cutouts. Um, we were able to get them in in the room. Uh, for, for the ordination, even so though it was cool. a, a little a little uh, separated uh, back in Alexandria, but the the day was absolutely a blessing. Um, once you walk into the church and and you have the organ going and you, you're kind of in those last minutes and the procession starts and and then all of a sudden 
Yeah, it's happening. You know, it's it's today. Um, and then and they call your name. They call your name, and you stand up and you say "present," and you're like, "Whoa!" You know, and and so and then it moves in. And then uh, for me, the, that moment that it it, it really hit me was um, whenever uh, we lay prostrate during the the litany of supplication, the litany of saints, and and they start going through all of those names, and you just really feel all of a sudden the presence of. Uh, for me, it was the presence of God, like. The communion of saints, the, the heaven was literally joining in into that celebration and then moments later having the bishop, you know, put his hands on your head and, 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 and say, the, say the words and the prayer at that moment and it just, it's, it, it doesn't seem real in some ways but yet knowing full on that it is real, it is, it is alive in you and that, that mark of ordination will, will never be able to be removed. And uh, I'm I'm getting kind of a, a little a little move there. Just, I hope everybody can. I, I got it too. I mean, I yeah, got goosebumps. I, um, I feel your excitement. Yeah, and uh, it just and and to do it with the five other guys, the the five guys that were chosen for our class, and um, it, it it just really was a culmination. It didn't matter that it wasn't in June. It did. It didn't matter that it ended up in August. It, it didn't matter that it was. It, but it happened, and 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 um, and. It was very, um, a very moving experience for me um, to be able to enter into that ministry with that confirmation of sorts, um, of that uh, with the with the hands and from the bishop, and uh, that that moment really becomes alive. And and the bishop really said at the mass, you know, this is the renewing of the church. You know, this is the moments that we we celebrate sacrament, and we we see that alive in the. These moments and um, and it really was I, and I, I, I don't know that if anybody else can really describe that without having experienced it I know you said that time but I'm sure there's still a moment in your life where you're like it's it's that moment it's that that from that point something something changed you know yeah it's it's that's the way re life really is um so we're coming to the close of the show I, I just can't add anything to what Deacon Alec just said. I mean, you feel the excitement, you feel the presence of God, you feel the movement of the Holy Spirit through him in, in the, the placing of the mark of diaconate on him, the holy orders that fills his life, that will direct his life for the rest of time. We didn't even get to talk about St. Patrick, yeah. but we will at some point. Yeah. I have, have to have you back because this has been just an awesome experience for you to experience with us. Um, and relive that so that we can experience with you. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us today on Catholic Life. Um, we're gonna have some more of these shows, I promise. We don't have them scheduled yet, but uh, we'll get the rest of the other four in here and uh, we'll live their experience too. So until next time, God bless everyone. <laughs>